All right. Hello and welcome everyone to this final race between JJ and SB Electric. Kat Cena is joining me here in the booth. And we'll see if we can get started here in just a moment. We've got the countdown. And ladies and gentlemen, race number three between JJ and SB Electric coming at you live right now. What's up, guys? Kat Cena, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it feels good to be here, man. It's exciting. We got game three here. I wasn't personally expecting this to happen. I don't... <laughs> I mean, this, this tournament as a whole has just been so exciting. You know, we had we had three three races in the semifinal between Paper Ario and Samurai. Why wouldn't there be three races between SB Electric and JJ? Uh, maybe, as Electric would say, this is going with the script. Um, <laughs> maybe it's just fate. I don't know. But regardless, it's very very exciting to see. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, JJ and SB is a very interesting combination because they're two very consistent players. But JJ has been playing for a little longer than SB has. He's a little more advanced in his movement. Has a PB that is a little better than SB's. But SB is putting up quite a fight here. It'll be very interesting to see how this final match in the semi-final round of this tournament shakes up. Well, and as we have seen, either one of these guys can take it. Like, JJ showed in that first race, just like you're saying, that opt optimal movement, um, how he, you know, he's able to gain seconds off of SB based, just purely based off the movement. But SB has shown that he's able to stay consistent and keep his head in the race and just, you know, put his head down, put the shoulder down and just go. And that if the other person falls apart, he can take it. So anything can happen in this third race as we have seen. Anything can happen. We saw during game one, JJ SRL take an unfortunate death at the end of Bianco six. And just as Chance would have it. SB Electric made the same exact mistake, lost a nearly identical amount of time. These races are unpredictable. Anything can happen in Super Mario Sunshine, any percent. This tournament so far has been insane. Or that this game three threatens a lot of brackets, just as Paper Are You making it past Samurai Man in the last semifinal bid. Well, sends up, it could be anyone's game at this point. Well, and, I mean, j so just to kind of cover what either one of these guys needs to do to take this third race. Um, JJ can't die. I mean, that, that I, I said at the end of the second race, had JJ not taken a death, he probably would have been a lot closer maybe even won the race, just purely based, again, based off of movement. He was making, after he took deaths, he was making up time based off of movement. Um, so as long as JJ can avoid deaths, he'll be fine. SB has got, has to do what he did in race number two and just keep his head down and go. Uh, because what, and, and what SB has to hope for is that his past race tilts JJ enough um, to cause him to make the same same mistakes that he did with race number two. Um, we'll see if that's yet to come. Um, if this little break between races two and three uh, changes the mindset of JJ, once again, whatever changed the mindset of him between race number one and two. Um, but that's yet to come. You know, speedrunning itself is such a psychological game. It is very mental. Of course, the player's gotta press the right buttons at the right time, try to eliminate 
every last possible dust frame that they can. But a lot of speed running is the mentality and the momentum. And a big thing about this game three here is it reminds us all that sometimes these tournaments are endurance races. Mentalities can change a lot over the course of hours of gameplay. We're, we've, I mean, <laughs> we're at like hour three of SMS gameplay today right now. These players mentally are very worn out, most likely. I think whoever comes out of this one ahead is the one that has the strongest mind. This is going to be a very mental match. A lot of just putting the emotions aside, putting the thoughts about the past races aside, and focusing on the game. Always focusing on the shines ahead, regardless of what happens. Well, that's exactly it, you know. Um, yeah, I always talk about with, with races in comparison to your day-to-day -day Twitch stream runs, you know. These guys can reset, and they reset constantly at, at early on. Um, in their practice runs and their attempts Th this is a situation where you can't do that and clearly the deaths got on top of jj in race number two in race number one um the minor mistakes got on top of sb um and that's what tilted them and that's what caused them to be in that mental state of you know not in it um but we'll see what happens here i mean we got about a minute worth of cutscenes left We'll get right right ahead to some actual gameplay, but it's, it's exactly what you said. It's whoever wins this, whoever comes out of this, is is the guy who has the mental fortitude to just just go. Six or so minute gap in between each run exists. These players are perhaps meditating a little bit, clear in their mind, it's getting ready to go all out for another hour and 15 minutes or so. And we're off for the third time today. JJ with some nice scumbag movement. Yeah, I know JJ fortunately able to get that good movement this time. He messed up last race and wasn't close enough to get that water cannon, water close enough to the feed fr front to, or the blue front to activate him. No mistakes here though. Yeah, it looks like they go out of here without much hardship onto this next little bit of mind clearing. We'll see if JJ goes for the quick kill here. JJ is a very consistent player, but after his nearly flawless personal best that he achieved in January, he's been going a little harder with his strategies. We've seen him go for pretty risky strategies like the butt slide in Serena 4. We'll probably see him go for this kill here. Let's see how it goes for him. Oh, it looks like it doesn't go too well. A late kill for JJ. SB going with the normal strat, it looks like. I think that's going to play in SB's favor a little bit here. Players about even, but JJ yeah. with the early M. Yeah, close to a sink there. Very nice entrance there from JJ, though, to get the upper hand. JJ leading the way very slightly into the first little Bianco Hills. Let's see how this first little bit of RNG shapes up. RNG affects a player's mentality quite greatly. Will play a very important role in this mental match. Definitely something we ought to be paying attention to. Looks like they both get decent spiders. JJ going in for a hard strat. Nice entry by him. 901. 
SB Electric with a 903. About a two second difference here into the first boss fight. Yeah, pretty straightforward boss fight here. Nothing too crazy, nothing too difficult. So both these guys will want to come out of here with that two second difference. Stay pretty even. Luckily for both of these guys, the first very demanding shine in terms of movement isn't until a couple minutes they get to sort of continue their rest perhaps here. Just getting a few spam sprays in the PD's mouth. Looks like it's going routine so far from both of them. Final hit on JJ, and the final hit on SB. Both of the players maintaining their positions out of Bianco 2. Yeah, really nice Bianco 2 from both of them. Again, pretty like you're saying, pretty routine. Uh, nothing too crazy. Now, before we head into Bianca 3, JJ has been having some difficulty with that pull. Um, and with this, with how close they are in time, uh, SB could easily take the lead here if JJ isn't able to execute this pull um, wall kick. The pull is one of those things in this game that just sneaks up on these players when they least expect it. A very precise jump that doesn't really get a lot of thought from high-level players, but so precise that every now and then, just the slightest change in how a player does things could lead to small time losses here. And it looks like he's getting it first try. SB as well. Averting crisis here in the very early going. Yeah, that's, that's good to see, and that'll be a huge confidence boost there from JJ. Um, he, again, like I said, he was having trouble with that, both races one and two, but able to get past that. Oh, bonk from SB, two bonks. He's got to pay attention here. He's got to hope to not get pushed off the stage by these blocks. Yeah, he's off this cycle now, but able to adjust. A scary moment from SB, nonetheless. Now, both these guys will go for travel skip. SB accidentally jumped in to Bianco 4 and didn't do travel skip last race. Luckily, that's not the worst travel skip mistake we've had this run. Those of you remember the J. Cole run where he completely missed the last hit on the guy on the polluted piranha and had to redo the whole Riku unlock over again in his group B match against Luigi. Luckily the mistake SB made only costed him a couple seconds worth of event cutscenes. Hopefully this goes a little more normally for both of you guys this time around. Looks like JJ gets the travel skip here. Getting travel skip. Pretty straightforward. Now for Bianca Reds, I love I love watching this. The movement is just so fun to analyze. I agree. This movement is rather crazy. See J. Cool moving through the stage, doing some acrobatics to collect these eight red coins. We'll see how this momentum spin goes for him. Looks pretty decent. Should be enough to get him to... Oh, he misses the, the seventh red coin. Very minor time loss, but... Still a little bit of time nonetheless. All things considered, still pretty good from JJ. Yeah. Yeah, no, he had some... He cleaned up in game number two. He had some trouble with it in game number one, but like you said, just narrowly missing that last red coin. Nothing too big, not a big time loss. Yeah, JJ's looking pretty good right now, especially considering his opponent's unfortunate two bonks during Bianco 3. JJ 
keeping it relatively clean here in the very early going. Of course, still a lot more to go. This shine has the potential to make a difference here in this run, not only because of the raw time losses or time saves attributed to RNG, but also to the momentum, to the mentality, to the psychological well-being of these players. Having bad RNG could frustrate these guys after hours of playing, could snowball into more and more mistakes later on, whereas having good RNG could perhaps relax the player, sort of get them more focused on the future. We'll see how this ends up from both of them. We saw a perfect pattern from JJ earlier in game one. It looks like that's not what's gonna happen here. Not a, not a particularly good first landing from him. See how it goes for SB. Looks like SB. SB's PD is going to be going over the wall here after this landing. Could be decent. Could be bad though. After this hit, PD will go right over the wall. If he goes right, that is disastrous. That is a big time loss for SB. But if the if the piranha plant goes straight backwards and heads right back out into the village, it won't be too bad for him. Looks like he's going back into the village. Won't be too bad of a time loss for SB. Could still be a decent pattern. Yeah, JJ on the other hand, getting a much better pattern. Uh, so he'll save some time off of SB. Like you said, not getting a great pattern. Yeah, it looks like JJ had a pretty decent pattern despite that first landing. SB also with a decent pattern. Yeah, uh, after going over the wall, that's not that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Definitely average above average RNG for SB. JJ perhaps with similar luck. Definitely a good thing psychologically for both of these guys. They're not going to be going into GBS, a very precise trick, while frustrated. They're going to be going into it knowing that they were treated well by these random numbers that determine so much in these speedruns. Nice transitionary movement by JJ. Secures that spam spray into a water slide. While not something that Perhaps a normal viewer would put much thought into. It is a precise trick. We have seen players in this tournament bonk on the benches. SB though nailing it there. And route to the gelato unlock. This will be his last hit and he'll try to conserve as much momentum as he can going into gelato beach. Yeah, now we'll, we'll have a lot of beach skip. Um, we've seen a little bit of trouble on both sides from for this skip. Um, but probably after practicing it now two times and a little bit in between races, uh, this shouldn't be too big of a deal for either of these guys. Yeah, we have seen these players perform quite well tricks that they unfortunately messed up on in the first two races during game three let's hope dbs is one of those shines that these players have a clearer mind on looks like jj's in first try nice job from him yeah really nice setup there from jj sb he's been bonking a couple he's times like, here sb going for a riskier setup than jj he's Right on the roof. Looks like he's gonna save time over him. Nice first try from him. That that's a huge confidence boost on, on SB's side. I mean he he took bonks both race number one and two. So for him able to get that pretty cleanly on in game three, uh, that's a that's that's a big deal. Definitely some weight off of his shoulders here. 
He's been doing a good job since that unfortunate Bianco 3 making up time on his opponent. It's rare that you make up time on JJSRL by doing riskier strategies than him. Well, it's like we were talking about in race number one. I mean, JJ is just, he's known for those risky strats like you're saying. Uh, so for SB to go for an even riskier strat, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. It is kind of funny, perhaps. JJ recognizing what he did wrong in game two is just taking this one a little easier, going for the easier setups, sort of relying on his movement to bring him to the top here. We head into Pianta Village. Saw some trouble here from JJ. This is where he took his first death um, with the invincibility frames um, when the whole village is covered in lava. But first, we'll take care of these chomplets. A little bit of RNG, not too big of a deal, though. Yeah, what well, mostly matters here is the last chomp. Of course, looks like SB is getting a good first chomp. We'll see what happens. Oh, good RNG from JJ. That's nice. He's not going for the risky sneak up behind the chomp and pull its tail strat. He's instead waiting to peek, wait until the chomplet peeks his head around the corner and then go in for the, for the release. Oh, SB getting that bad pattern. So not great RNG on his side, unfortunately. Having to go around. Definitely unfortunate from him after what he did to gain time on JJ during GBS. A little bit of that likely wiped out by some external factors in Pianta 1. RNG always plays a big role in these speed runs, but in this very mental match of game three, it matters even more than it normally does. Piantissimo will offer these players some time to rest. Crack their knuckles a little bit. Looks like JJ, he's been uh, practicing that movement. Each time, takes a little bit of bonk, not a big deal though. As long as you beat Piantissimo's time, uh, you can go as fast or slow as you want. But JJ taking that time to practice that movement up. That way when he walks over into uh, the, that situation up to that shine, you know, he's got it on lock already. Pianta 2 reminds me a lot of Pinna 2 in Pinna Park in that this really is one of the calmer shines in what is an extraordinarily eventful level. Pianta 1 with the movement and the RNG patterns. Pianta 3 with a very difficult GWKD, a floodless stage. Pianta 4, a little bit of RNG, a precise chain grab. Pianta 5, of course, Ramel cycle. Pianta 6, a huge IL shine, one of the biggest movement shines in the game. These players, especially in game three, probably not complaining too much about the little bit of free time Piantism was offering them. And there we see JJ able to, oh, very nice movement up there. Saves a bit of time, but more importantly, not taking a death there. And I said that at the beginning of the race, he, if he, he needs to avoid taking deaths. Uh, so for him to be able to avoid that death that he took in game number two, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is very likely because of circumstances here that the biggest factors in determining the end of this race could be deaths and perhaps some RNG. But one third of the big RNG shines are already past us, so a lot of what these guys are focusing on here is just holding their marks during secrets and during shines like Pianta 3 where there is a chance of death. These guys, for these guys, that is the worst possible thing they can see. They want to avoid it at all costs. A little bit more RNG here. Big chain chomp. Again, we want that movement left. Uh, SB has actually gotten the movement right both times. He'll get good RNG here this next time. So RNG not taken 
uh, playing a factor here in this uh, this shine. It'd be perhaps a couple seconds worth of time save for SV Electric here, provided his movement goes well and he gets a late chain release. JSRL, of course, a clean, routine Pianta 4 from him, despite the slightly unfortunate RNG. Looks like SV Electric's gonna be getting him into the bath as well. Will be perhaps a slight time save from him, but a much bigger factor in how this race could end up is this next shine, Pianta 5. The RNG in Pianta 4 makes a difference of about one to two seconds, depending on who you ask. But Pianta 5, on the other hand, perhaps the biggest RNG wild card in the whole run. Getting a Ramel cycle here will make a difference of around 15 to 20 seconds. Ooh, JJ, precarious situation. He could have easily fallen off there. Yeah, so th this last race, uh, SB got that early cycle and JJ wasn't able to get it. It just kind of compounded upon that death that he took in, uh, in Pianza 3. SB like the little he's tripping up a little bit as well on the mushrooms. Perhaps more of a time loss than JJ had. Let's see how this throw ends up for JJ. Oh, it looks like he might be in position. Wow! He is in a very good position here to get that early cycle. He just needs to... Which he does! Good... Nicely done by JJ SRL. Ramel cycle in a very critical game three of the semifinal. Well, and, you know, you, you talk about mentality, you know, RNG can kind of fix your mentality, sort of. And oh, SB! SB Double oh. Ramel cycle, as long as he can get it. He's oh, he's, oh, oh, no! no! He missed it! Because he, he was bouncing around on his him. head. So extremely unfortunate there for SB. Missing Ramel cycle, all because it's just his own movement. That was a crazy situation. Usually when the player stomps on the Pianta's head, it stops. But that did not happen in SB's case. He kept on walking. Well, fortunately... The, uh, the Chuckster here has continued to walk as well, so he didn't lose too much time, fortunately. He didn't stop at, at any point, but obviously losing time there to JJ. And that wasn't even necessarily RNG. That was, I, that was his own fault to a degree. Yeah, to a degree it was. Of course, there was that very strange mechanic where the Pianta didn't stop, but regardless, that is a huge development mentally for SB Electric, knowing that a 15 to 20 second time save is right in front of your eyes and just not being able to secure it. We'll see, hopefully that doesn't affect his gameplay. JJ with a very impressive 215 showing wow. in the six. This, I mean, this is, we're starting to see JJ from game number one. Uh, I think it's, I think it's mentality. I think it's, he got that RNG. He did really well, he's avoiding deaths. Um, you know, 215, that's that's a extreme that's a very, very good time here. That 215 is one of the best times you can see in a run. 216s are extraordinarily rare to see RTA, but that time is usually considered the best. 215s incredible during a race. SB getting a backflip, unfortunately. That's gonna be a slight time loss from him. We'll see what time he ends up with. JJ, looks like he's going to be getting a really good 28. Oh, SB not being able to unearth that Pianta there, and he can't clean him either. JJ having trouble with Pianta 7. 204 from SB. Wow. Yeah. This, and, this is going back to game one. Uh, you know, we re-flipped re the, the, uh, the dialogue, if you will. You know, JJ just cruising and putting his head down. SB is the one now making the mistakes. Regardless of how this race goes for SB Electric, he may be loading up practice codes after this one and doing some Piana 6 because during game one, he relegated himself to a 202. A 204 
not that much better here in game three. Definitely looking like a weak spot for SB Electric. Let's see how JJ secures this honey skip. It looks good from my end. He's got it. All right. Yeah, it's always funny, you know. <laughs> you see that you see how that honey skip is done, and you you expect, you know, once you get that fade out, that miss, and that fade out in that specific location, you know, oh, they've got it. But sometimes you just you gotta be sure. Honey skip is one of those crazy tricks, just like the pole in Bianca three, that just when the player least expects it, will switch up. After weeks and weeks of just getting it very consistently not having much trouble with it, it can just creep up on the player over weeks and weeks of small changes to their movement. Luckily, it hasn't happened very much during this tournament. I can think of one example where Ouija missed Honey Skip in a very strange fashion. He died, but just didn't trigger the cutscene. Luckily, not happening to JJ. Doesn't look like it's gonna happen to SD either. JJ, unfortunately, not getting perfect mecha. But able to get, get it oh. done pretty well. It looks like he did get perfect mecha. Uh, he didn't. He didn't get the uh, re-grab on the rocket. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would have been... Uh, all right, all right. Otherwise, that, that was as close to perfect as you could get. Yeah, that was still pretty decent. We've seen a lot of players trip up pretty heavily on this shine, but not JJ really keeping the time losses to a minimum in Pinawana critical shine during Super Mario Sunshine any percent race. Down a two coming up, or pin a two rather. Be a bit of a bit of a mental break for JJ. An easier shine, despite it being a floodless secret. Hopefully, he'll be able to, to recharge for pin a three, a crazy shine. He's taken us through the Tash route today. Impressive stuff from him. Looks like SB getting a good Manta as well. Nice from him getting all those rockets. Yeah, he got that re-grab. He actually did that perfect. Nicely done by SB, getting the movement a little more optimally than his opponent. Unfortunately, not the biggest time save over his opponent. But still really must feel really good for him to not mess up such a critical shine. Well, and that's the sort of thing that SB has to do. You know, just slowly take back time. You know, it, use harder strats if he needs to. You know, um, you know I know we know, I know that we talk about JJ being the one who goes for the harder strats, but SB's kind of got to pull it out here now. Your game number three, you're behind. Um, you're a little bit under halfway done. It's time to start pulling out that kind of stuff. Definitely. We'll see what these guys decide to do. Of course circumstance the players mental state whether or not they're tired will play a huge role in what these guys decide to do here all right he's heading towards that awning get in the bounce gonna go for the y turn here oh he oh he the boat Wow, that is so unfortunate for JJ. Not something that's hugely in his control there. Just glitchy mechanics, really. It was that was weird. I had I, I he just clipped completely through that ship. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I've rarely seen that if at all. Oh, oh he misses the beam. That's very unfortunate. You know, he, I was about to say he had a good backup there for that clip, uh, but now he has to completely scale this area all over again. He did have a very smart backup. He used his knowledge of the cycles to be able to retrieve that coin without going out of his way much, but unfortunately just misses the beam and suffers another harsh time loss in this movement heavy shine. Not what JJ wanted to see out of here, but as long as he doesn't mess up 
pin a four, secures the one cycle, and there's EYG well. He should still come out of pinna with a decent time, especially considering the early cycle. Well, this is, again, an opportunity for SB. Um, you know, SB doesn't go for that strat that, that JJ does, but um, as long as he plays it safe, he can still get these reds done faster. Yeah, Just SB. have to avoid getting, getting electrocuted here, which he does. Yeah, it looks clean from him. Definitely will be some time save over JJ there. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's see how JJ gets this one cycle down. Again, one of those shines that a little rare for a very top level player to make a mistake, but they do be an easy, heavy time loss. Looks like he's gonna get it though. Nicely done. JJ on a pretty decent run, all things considered, before those mishaps in pin of three was a very nice pace. He could still potentially make Well, he only had a couple, like we said, you know, as much as they were, they were mistakes, they, they were pretty minor. Um, they, he lost maybe 15, 20 seconds there, maybe even less. Um, so as long as he remains on this pace, though, I mean, his PB is a 115.54, a 114.54. Not sure if a 114 is still on the tables since we're so far out, but, um, you know, 115 would be nice to see. 115 would be nice to see. Of course, 114s are extraordinarily difficult times to achieve. It's very unlikely we'll see that here, but a 115 is still on the table from JJ. Pretty solid run, has the potential to make something good out of the rest of this. Interesting papaya launch there. It's a little far from the gate, and he can't unearth the durian. Where's the durian? He can't get it out of the ground. He's eating coins out of the ground. Oh, wow. That was an interesting time loss from him. Yeah, weird. You know, you haven't seen that at all. Uh, but here we go. He goes for this one stew setup for EYG. Like he's got the bulk of it down here. He secures the ground pound. He's got it. Nice one stew from JJ. Despite the time losses in the beginning, he had a very strange papaya launch. He had to walk or spray the papaya closer to the door. But before that, had just a really tough time getting the durian out of the ground. A bizarre mistake. We'll see how he does this secret. We saw him go. A little safer on GBS. We'll see if he still goes for, through the middle. Oh, he messes up through the middle. Looks like he's able to save it. Took a weird slide. Uh, and he <laughs> probably didn't want to take a death. Uh, this is where he took another death. So he, he doesn't want to take that again. Uh, took a little bit of safer approach to that. He probably was going for that middle uh, middle route initially, but uh, after taking that slide, decided you know I need to back off a little bit. Yeah, he probably noticed something was wrong with his angle and decided to hold the stick neutral or backwards, delete his momentum, and just go safe for the rest of that shine. SB going a little safer from the beginning goes to the right. Pretty healthy decision. Will probably save time over JJ's rather. Bumpy EYG segment. Pretty decent pinup from SB. All things considered, looks to be saving time over his opponent during this stage, unless the rare occurrence of a big mistake in pin of seven happens. Not likely. Yeah, and um, you'll notice JJ go left. SB's gonna go right here. Um, that's what we've seen in games one and two. Yeah, SB going for a bit of a rarer but faster strat here on this level. Wow, that was a surprisingly clean pinna from both of these players despite being in their third consecutive match of the day.
pretty nice from both of these guys here. Of course, JJ having the two most major time losses out of these two pinnas, but all things considered, pretty clean, pretty impressive. Let's see how SB... Oh, he nails the right side movement. Nice from him. Yeah, very clean. Rather seamless pinna from both of these guys, even considering all the circumstances, the fact that these guys are tired, they're exhausted, they've put everything on the line during these last two races here. Both of these guys, as I'm saying this, tripping up on some rather basic movement here. JJSRL sort of overshot the crate, the uppermost crate in that little pyramid. Enrico One lost a bit of time because he had to backtrack, and SB Lecter taking a weird path from Pinna to Rico. Minor time losses from both of these guys. Hopefully that's not a sign of things to come here in Rico. Mistakes in Rico are very costly. Generally not a, not a stage that top level players mess up too badly on, but there is a huge opportunity for 15 plus second mistakes on almost all of these shines here, except probably this one. JJ completing the glooper blooper boss fight, heading on a Rico 2. SB Electric open for a fight that's just as routine. Yeah, good question in chat. Where is uh, JJ compared to? He was actually record pace up until Pinna uh, with uh, Reds. He, uh, if, if for reference, for, in his first race he had a 928 Pinna. Uh, this 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 time around he had a 1011. Yeah, unfortunate time losses in Pinna for JJ Esserol there. As I stated earlier, Ramel cycles usually 15 to 20 seconds, so those mistakes in Pinna, fortunately, perhaps negating a little bit of that early cycles effect. As a lot of the viewers know, the top two any percent runs on the leaderboards, the 114.40 by Nendere and the 114.45 by Nanashi, both do not have Ramel cycle. So getting Ramel cycle in the early going is a surefire way to gain time on the world record. Not surprising to see JJ ahead of the world record there for a bit, considering his really high skill level and that good luck. Wow, almost close to an 18 flat. Really nice movement there from JJ. 18 flat is a really good time for a race. We saw a 17 out of Feck, a fellow member of the Little Kid Squad earlier in the group matches. Got a 17 an insane time for Rico 2 in any circumstance. That was perhaps for the IL lovers in the audience, one of the craziest moments of this tournament so far. SB 1948, still averting major crisis, even though it's not an almost 18 flat. That crane RNG, really far forward, allows JJ to have an easy setup where dives into the crane, holds R all the way to the crane. Pretty consistent there, consistent and fast. Yeah, JJ just seems to be taking care of business right now. Um, you know, <laughs> going into race number two. Or coming out of race number two, just saying, you know what? Let's get this done. SB, wow, weird movement there. Getting like the he, triple jump. Yeah, he missed a he missed the spin put there. Unfortunately, not getting height and taking a bonk on the ship. Had a horrific time loss, but certainly not what the player would like to see in a fairly simple shine like Rico Three. A much harder shine coming up here for SB. JJ already on it. This floodless secret of Rico 4. Getting that 
precise jump there that's come to bite a couple of these players in this tournament thus far. Looks like he's en route to a blue cycle. He makes it. Nicely done from him, cutting it a little close. But comes out of Rico for Scott Free. Nicely done from him. Oh, SB! Yeah, He's gonna have to do the backup. Yeah, SB making these mistakes here. Um, this is what we've seen. We, I mean, this has been the story. It's been SB making these minor mistakes. I mean, this is this is looking. This is race. It looks a lot more like game number one, um, where a, a JJ was just able to kind of clutch everything, and SB making these minor mistakes here and there. Minor mistakes in Rico Harbor, especially one after another like that, could definitely affect the player's mentality. Rico Harbor, not really the biggest stage for mistakes in most of these players' head. They usually expect to come out of here maintaining their pace, having a pretty suboptimal time in the Rico 2 sewer, and then unfortunately taking a bonk in Rico 3, and then having to take a very slow detour in Rico 4 all in a row could definitely affect SB's performance here. Let's hope he's able to clear his mind, look ahead, finish out this Rico Harbor without any further incident. Well, JJ taking care of Rico 5. He'll head into Rico 6. These reds. We've seen both of these guys get pretty consistent 132s. 133 is the most optimal time for that red coin mission. We see Ouija usually get 133 as a player that goes for relatively risky strats when you compare him to the rest of the any percent field. So both of these guys usually take their turns a little bit wider, pay more attention to not dying and not missing coins as opposed to taking every turn as tight as possible and saving all the frames probably the better mindset in a game three match in Rico Harbor. Nicely done from JJ. That angle is pretty precise. Lining himself up on that red coin block for a simple rollout into the blooper. Yeah, none of these guys have had any problems with these reds. We've seen, we've seen racers have trouble with these reds for whatever reason, but neither of these guys having a problem with it. JJ doing a really nice job there. Yeah, a high 182 for the particular route he took in getting that coin between the two pillars. Very nice time for him, all things considered. We'll see SB try to match that time. JJ gonna be closing out Rico Harbor here. We are over halfway in this game three match. We are pretty close to deciding who moves on to the finals of this very entertaining, very competitive tournament. SB going for a riskier route on this sixth coin. Let's see if he nails it. Looks like he's gonna do it. Nicely done by him. We'll see what time he ends up with. A higher 132, saving a little bit of time on JJ. Nothing too major. Yeah, and JJ with the nice quick kill on Shadow Mario. And he'll head on out of here. Yeah, he's, he's heading on out of here with some momentum. He's... Had a pretty good Rico. He's hoping to carry on that momentum into Bianco 6. Bianco 6 is a particularly bothersome shine for a lot of these players. Both of these guys took perhaps the costliest death one could take in one of these secret shines during game one. Both of them falling from the top of Bianco 6 in pretty much the same spot. These guys Hoping to get this one done as cleanly as possible. As our viewers are reminding us, this is still a pretty good pace from JJ. Despite his 
slight time losses in Pinna. He's still on a pretty decent run here. You could you could work something out with this. Of course, Espy's had some minor errors here and there. We saw him make some mistakes during Rico Harbor, but a lot of this difference is just JJ playing really well, maintaining his momentum after that Ramel cycle. Been playing very well. This is the moment of truth here, though. This upper level of Bianco 6. This has led to the death of so many people's runs in this tournament. Both of these runners suffered a death here earlier. Let's see how wow. he... Wow, nice GWK. Yeah, he, he didn't go for that in race number two, uh, understandably so, but I, I, think, <laughs> I think that was a confidence move. Yeah, that really was. That just shows this run's going well for him. He's feeling good about what he's got here. He potentially thinks he could work something out with this run. I mean, maybe he sees this as a PB attempt at this point. Pretty nice pace from him so far. Has to be going safer on the spin jump. Pretty close there, but he makes it to the other side of that gap. The real important part, though, is yet to come. Yeah, just see if JJ decides to go for this quick kill on Shadow Mario. He didn't decide to go for it last time. Not going for it again here. Still a pretty quick kill, although not the quick kill. SB, precise movement here. Looks like he's got it. He's got it. Nicely done by both of these guys, averting crisis on one of the hardest secrets in this race. Well, moving out of there, that's kind of a nice little weight off both these guys' shoulders, you know. Um, game one, just both of those guys taking swan dive deaths. Ooh, and Shadow Mario JJ was... right side. That was very strange. With SB, we saw earlier the Pianta and Pianta 5 just didn't stop despite him stopping on it. And now, despite doing the same movement he always does, Shadow Mario decides to go right on JJ. Some weird... NPC mechanics we're seeing here during this match. Yeah, SB getting a slightly slower kill on Shadow Mario, but JJ now in Serena. And this, this is where the rubber meets the road. Um, just because of, you know, Hotel Delfino and all of its shines that we have to do Manta, um, cleaning up the beach, and then King Boo and RNG involved there. When you ask many runners what their least favorite level is, they will tell you Serena Beach, and that is because of exactly what Scotch said. This level is the ultimate test of skill, of being able to work with glitchy mechanics, and of RNG, of course. This stage could likely determine who comes out of this race on top. JJ looks like he has a good first division here, hoping for a good rest of this Manta. Wow, looking decent so far. He's got to take care of that Manta behind him. Decent first, first split there. First stage. So he's able to deal with the rest of these small guys. Wow, JJ. He almost had a pretty impressive match during game one, unfortunately got ping-ponged a little bit. But he's able to secure a pretty decent first stage there during game three. Nicely done by JJ. Yeah. Very now, good Manta. That was a really good Manta, you know. Um, maybe not the best um, stage two in the world, but definitely that stage one was extremely impressive. Yeah, that stage one could have made up for it. What's interesting is that's not the first really good Manta we've seen from JJ during this tournament. During his race against Ouija, he was on a crazy run. Oh, SB getting thrown around a bit there. But, wow, again, taking another hit. During JJ's match against Ouija, he also had a really good Manta. But SB, not unfortunate, he's not sharing JJ's luck. Getting thrown out a lot during that first stage. Looks like it was 2.45 for JJ. Very nice time. Yeah, this uh, Manta fight on SB's side, not as good, but still actually pretty good. 
not too terrible. It is still decent, but going up against a Manta like that, still not helping SB very much at this point, so late into this run. Yeah, and JJ had oh. into the secret. Oh, we weird wall kick. Able to save it, though, in an interesting way. He takes a big fall and takes a smaller fall. Oh, hopefully he doesn't take another one. Oh, he gets stuck under the ceiling. He's going to take another fall. JJ with a lot of hardship trying to get into that loading zone. Oh, he barely makes it in. Wow. Yeah, that was that was, that was very manga s way of getting in there. Quite unfortunate. Serena 2 often is a hard spot for a lot of these players. This secret can be treacherous at times with the precise spin jump dives and the momentum spin at the end, but JJ having trouble with the entry. A manka s moment from him there. Trips up a bit on the sand block. Yeah, just a weird ledge grab. All right. Just this momentum spin between him and the shine. Looks like he's got it nicely done by JJ despite that very tough entry, SB with a flawless entry, making up some time on his opponent. On his opponent, that is what he wants to see after that manta. Well, you know, able to clean that up after making a couple, a little bit of a hiccup, if you will, with that entrance. But SB taking the opportunity at hand. You know, <laughs> JJ making those mistakes, and that's that's what SB's got to wait for. It has to hope for at this point. I saw that comment in chat, and I, I fully agree with that. You know, JJ just ha can't be make can't make mistakes, and SB is hoping that he does. Yeah, this is SB's goal here is just to capitalize, complete these shines as cleanly as possible. JJ taking a bonk there. That's you know, one one and a half, perhaps two seconds for SB to make up. He's got to hope that. A lot of those little mistakes. Oh, another little mistake from JJ. Missing the clip. Again. Oh, this is it again. Wow. This is what SB has to capitalize on here to make it into these finals. He has to hope that JJ makes more mistakes like that, and he has to hope that he moves through these shines cleanly without repeating those mistakes. SB's got a chance here. He's got to make the most of it. Yeah, if SB can capitalize on that, you know, th th that's the exact sort of thing that S he, he needs to be doing. Takes a little bit of a different route. See if he can get this banana split first try. Takes a moment. That's fine. You know, he, he, he took a moment there to set himself. It looked good. And that's fine because he's still making up time. Yeah, very nice handling of the situation by SB Electric. We'll see how JJ handles this casino skip. He had trouble with it during game one. It looks so simple. But in reality, it's a very precise trick. He has some dust frames on the wall there. He's not going to make it. More mistakes from JJ here in Serena Beach. Yeah, and I saw the comments in chat. You know, everyone was saying Serena Beach is, is going to be kind of the decider. SB with the small bonk. Yeah, small bonk from him there. And it's sort of coming down to that, it appears, you know. Um, nice spin momentum jump there. Nice crazy strat from JJ will compensate for a small part of that casino skip. Oh, very clean secret from JJ. The casino skip could obviously have been better, but that secret was pretty flawless for an RTA speed run. Yeah, and SB had had a better clip there than JJ, so he'll make up a little bit of time. Let's see if he goes for this. He will not go for that momentum spin jump. All right, guys, let me remind you guys a little bit during game three. JJ SRL had a... Oh, SB, he saves it. JJ had a tricky game two leading up to King Boo, but... He lost 35 seconds on those extra cycles during this shine that he's currently facing right now. This yeah. could play a role either way for both of these players. The last big RNG wild card in this speed run coming right up. 
Yeah, five extra cycles on JJ's side. Uh, I mean, he he was ta he complained about it in in the Discord. Um, I mean, he was behind to begin with, but that really kind of solidified him being behind was the RNG. Five is definitely pretty bizarre. Usually you only see either zero, one, or two from these guys. And oh, he starts it off with an extra. That's just not good to see. Oh, and another two he starts extras. off with two extra. How about that? That is crazy. Oh, finally with the fruit. But not, at, not before two extra cycles to start out this shine. Yeah, so SB has to pray for good RNG here. Um, I mean, two cycles already. Uh, this is this is his opportunity here. There we go with a with a fruit cycle from SB right off the bat, as is usual. OJ with just some abnormally bad luck during wow. the last races. Let's see what he gets here. Fruit. All right. So JJ back to the normal kind of cycle. Of how how this is supposed to be done, you know? Taking a bonk. Wow, execution. Execution can play a huge role on this shine. Oh, SB with an extra. Wow, only one extra now separates these guys. That's a difference of about seven seconds. All right, there's the fruit for SB. All right. No, JJ, one. JJ has to pray for fruit here. I mean... And unfortunately, oh. SB having to no, wow. SB having to deal with all these bubbles. I mean, so that's three extra now. Four extra for four. JJ. Two races in a row with crazy bad RNG from this JJ. This is horrible RNG. Wow, okay, it's over for JJ, fortunately. But SB, if he gets fruit right here, which he oh doesn't, no, so he's taking extra as well. What a roller coaster. RNG for these guys is just terrible. Okay, so SB had three extra and JJ had four extra. So SB will save about seven seconds over JJ just based on that. That was I, I'm gonna that was disgusting RNG. Yeah, that is very rare to see. That was particularly bad, especially considering JJ got very similarly bad RNG just last race on King Boo. What a crazy shine, especially so far late into this run. A little bit of time saved for SB though. Now, <laughs> cleaning up the beach, uh, we've seen a distinct difference between these two guys. Um, between game one and two, JJ did a really nice job in game two. Not so great in game one, um, whereas it was the complete opposite for SB. Uh, SB did a pretty good job in game one, not so great in game two. The shine definitely is a tough one, but let's take a oh. minute to look at the general picture here. This lead is diminishing between these two players. SB has been slowly creeping up on JJ throughout Serena Beach, making fewer mistakes. JJ tripping up a little bit on the beach, leaving some goop behind. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite him. But SB, only about a 14 second difference. Oh, wow, 221, 221. is really good. Wow. wow. That's extremely good. Yeah, that I is mean, an exceptional you're, performance. You're looking for like a 215, but a 221, that's really, really good. That's not something you see very often. Oh, the timer not stopping for SB. 217, still pretty decent. But Four, about four seconds in between those two players on that segment. Of course, so late into this very critical match, it makes a huge difference. These players from here on out have to execute. It is Noki 7 and then the entirety of Noki Bay. The most movement critical stage in this game coming up. I have a feeling it's going to come down to how they take care of their eel fights. Um, and that movement up the mountain for SB has been kind of um, iffy here and there. JJ not uh, getting that quick kill. 
getting yeah, a quick kill on on Shadow Mario, but not as optimal as previous. Yeah, that's definitely not as optimal as possible. SB with a much better quick kill. Very impressive for him. Gets him before the wood. We remember back in Nintendo's world record grind days, his split name for the shine was Before the Wood. Before the Wood is the goal. SB meets that goal. Nice turn of seven from him. But the more important test is Noki Bay coming up. The last stage in this speed run will likely determine who will win this very close semi-final race. JJ heading up the cliff. Oh, he misses the triple jump. It's going to set him back. He's not going to be in contention for the first cycle here. Believe this goes smoothly for him. Gets the water slide, a dive, a roll out, a spin jump. Looking nice. Pretty decent second cycle from JJ there. Yeah, he's SB. able to make that up pretty nicely. SB Electric is falling closely behind. SB going for the consistent slower cycle here, but eliminates a lot of the opportunity for mistakes. A pretty clean second cycle from Jake, from JJ there. Let's be hoping to not trip up on these bombs. It is possible to trip up on these bombs after the player has traversed this cliff. Luigi in his very impressive, at the time second place, now third place, any percent PB. A lot of time loss on these bombs from him in that very impressive run. Can play a difference, doesn't here. These players are looking ahead to Noki 2. Another movement heavy shine. <coughs> These guys are so close. Really impressing us both. We thought this was gonna be a very mental race, probably troublesome for both of these guys. They were probably tired, but no, these guys are exceeding expectations in every way. JJ taking the dip into the poison water there, but all in all, impressive showings from both of these guys there have been keeping it together. Close races, not making many mistakes. JJ with pretty clean movement up the hill. Impressive from both of these guys. Nice clip there from JJ. Good dive. SB following up with some nice movement on his end as well. Yeah, it looks like JJ might have saved. I mean, uh, JJ might have. Oh, no, SB trips up on the wall. I was going to say SB was about to save a little bit of time on JJ since he took a dip into the water. But no, SB unfortunately slips down the wall a little bit, isn't able to secure a wall jump. That's, a, again, these very tiny time losses in these last few shines. Serena 6 and now this could add up here. 21 seconds we're, we're seeing from the chat here is the difference between both of these guys as it stands. A very close race. All of these shines matter. Let's see JJ hover through the bottle here. Should be fairly routine. He'll try to make the most out of his hovers, get as much momentum as possible. Decent. Oh, he trips up on the floor there. Yeah, it looked like he tried to go over top of it, tried to be a little bit more optimal, but unfortunately got a little clip there on the edge of that roof. Falling victim to gravity here in Noki 3, a slight time loss on a level that doesn't usually play much of a difference in these races. SB is saving some time. Man, this this might come down to Corona. Um, ultimately. I mean, it, depending on if, you know, one of them goes for fast Corona or misses a ground pound at the end. This is extremely close. I might agree. Oh, taking a, another dip into the water. But it's, he's making these small mistakes now. It's oh, taking an early dive. Oh, oh no! Scary from him. Just wow. Now, well, now he's got to be super careful because. He... All right, all right, guys. So probably a little less than twenty seconds of a difference between both of these guys. 
The difference between a five tooth and a six tooth eel is about eight seconds. The difference between fast corner and slow corner is about eight seconds. Anything can happen here in the late going. It all starts here with eel. One of the most treacherous bosses in the entirety of this game. Well, and JJ goes for this kind of faster strat and SB kind of takes it a little bit more lax. So we'll see a difference in strategy uh, unless SB decides, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to pull off this faster strat here because uh, I need to. Looks like JJ's going in for the six tooth. He's got the bulk of it. He just has to secure the cutscene skip. Really quick movement there from JJ. Oh, he's stripping up a little bit. Oh, he gets it. All right, all right. A little bit of a delay from him. We'll see SB going for the six tooth here. He had trouble with it earlier in one of these other matches. Looks like here in game three, he's doing a little better. Let's see if he can secure this skip here. Oh, so close from him. He gets it, nice. A little scary from both of these guys on the skip, but they get it. Let me tell you, Scotch, it is crazy to see a game three match in the semifinals be this close. Well, and this is, just, I mean, I talk about it constantly. It's the exact, it's the exact sort of thing you expect, um, especially with the buildup from games one and two. Uh, I, I think I don't think anyone didn't expect game three to go this way. Both of these guys are just so talented, so consistent. We've seen them avert any major crisis during this race, just playing it clean, relying on their movement to play the biggest roles here in who's ahead of who. We've just seen a very through and through exciting match so far. Pretty straightforward, Piantissimo. This isn't going to draw too much of an effect, but Noki 6 can can really make or break this run for both of these guys. And Noki 5 can be more aptly titled pre-Noki 6. This is a time for the player to sort of size up what they have to accomplish here in the end game if they're on a good pace time for them to mentally prepare themselves for the Noki 6 and for the Corona. These can definitely play a role here, securing this green cycle, not dying on this secret, is the number one priority for both of these guys in hopefully making it on to the finals. Could all come down to this. The hardest secret in the game, the shell secret. It starts here with a hard entry. We'll see JJ Arcerel reverse these ropes. Yeah, the, the rope movement on JJ's side has been really good. So, um, so hopefully he's able to maintain that momentum. And it looks like he is. Yes, you were That's correct. all about getting that green cycle. All right, he's done his first few wall kicks. Now he's here getting those dives in. Looks good so far. Here's the important part. He's got to secure this jump onto this green side. He makes it. Is he going to go for platform skip? He does. Oh, a scary platform oh. skip. All right. He's just got to play it safe from here on out. Make it to the end of the shine. A scary ledge grab. Oh. Yeah, taking that, taking that ledge grab. I mean, playing it safe ultimately, but... Um, losing just a slight bit of time. If SB gets that green cycle, will he go for... No, he won't go for, for the platform skip. Also playing it safe. Gets the ground pound, though. Again, so clean from wow. both of these guys. Both these guys are just putting on a show now. I mean, this is really a clinic at this point. Neither of these guys have made really any major mistakes here in Noki. Yeah, and really for much of the run, I mean, these guys really have just been entertaining us through and through, letting their movement dictate everything. 
These guys are playing crazy, getting every trick done just right. That Noki 6 was very nice, all things considered. JJ SRL moving on to Corona. He's hoping to keep SB at bay. Hoping now, not. Here's the question. Does he go for fast Corona? That is a huge question. JJ SRL knows he can play it safe here and still come out on top without the risk of death. Fast Corona is, of course, fast, but it opens a door that we have seen trespassed by many of these guys so far in the tournament of death. Death is a possibility when the player goes for Fast Corona. We'll see what decision JJ makes. Well, here we go, folks. I mean, both these guys are... He's playing it's safe. Corona. He's playing it safe here. Which I, you know what? That's a good move. You, you've got the lead, and fast Corona isn't enough of a difference for you to lose the lead. Um, so you, you might as well not, you know, risk it. But SB, he, I mean, he's got to go for it. He's got to. He knows every second counts. Oh, he's not going to either. That's oh, these guys playing it safe. That's extremely surprising. Definitely In my opinion. In my opinion, you've got to go for it. I agree with you. I agree with JJ's decision. Not sure about SB's. He's just so close to JJ right now to where a death. We've seen players die on Bowser in this tournament. A death on Bowser could make the difference if SB goes for fast Corona. Of course, there's still a little bit of a chance, but it's much, much more difficult for SB now. A lot more has to happen to JJ. For him to come out on top and make it to these finals. Oh, takes a bonk. On the Mario. rocket nozzle box. He's going to rocket storage Mario. up into the clouds. JJ with the lead going into the final boss. Will he make it to the finals? And he can clinch it here with a, with a high 116. There's five ground pounds. He's, he's really going to avoid this goop. He got hit by it early. Day. To the third to last platform, the second to last one is the hard one. We'll see how he goes about this. Oh, a little bouncy. A little bouncy. Oh, oh no. and a bunk. Oh, looks, it looks like he's going to avoid the Minashi. JJ with a very nice save at the end, avoids the Minashi, secures a 116.37 and makes his way into the finals. Wow. Nice job. This Amazing was performance. a heck of a way to finish, you know, both these guys. I mean, uh, SB Electric. Oh, taking the goop. It's very, oh there. man, I, it would have been nice to see two 116s, but a 117 flat, oh. pretty much. Um, good performances from both these guys, big GGs. On both sides, I mean, less than 30 seconds worth of difference um, between them. Uh, but ultimately, JJ SRL taking the win. Moving on to the finals, he'll play Paper Ario uh, later. SB Electric will t take on Samurai Man for that bronze medal. But what a, what a race and what a match. It is amazing to me how both of those guys held that together. That was an insane game three. Very happy to have been able to commentate that. Wow, I will, I'm very excited. Looking forward to what JJ SRL has to show here in the finals. Amazing performance by SB. So, we got so, JJ and SB in here. GG's to both of you, big GG's to you, JJ. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's so let's go through each of those races. So race number one, um, pretty consistent play uh, from you, JJ, as well, and, and just minor mistakes here and there. But the big thing was two, both of you guys taking that death and Bianca six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my heart dropped when I died in Bianca six because I missed a GWK. So like, all right, I have to do the normal strat, and I went for the normal strat, and I dropped the spin put. So I'm like, all right, I'll just ground pound and die and do it again. <laughs> yeah, the whole race one, I was mega distracted. So. Yeah, that jackhammer. <laughs> yeah. Now, 
race number two oh, was, God. A, was a completely <laughs> different story. JJ, you took, I think, three deaths. Yeah. And SB, I mean, you played very consistently in race number two. Um, mm -hmm. That had to feel pretty good. Yeah. And JJ, let's go through those deaths real quick. <laughs> Start, I, okay, so I honestly feel like I'm Bouncy Boy right now. Like, if you cue the any percent world record history where Trey says, like, if Bouncy Boy's playing well, he continues to play well. But if he doesn't play well, everything goes wrong. That's pretty much what happened. It started off, like, just unlocking the Piranha Plant. I couldn't unlock it, I was too far away. And I died in Pianta 3. And I'm like, all right, I'm way behind. I wasn't even looking at that stream at that point. I missed the early cycle. I turn on the stream. I'm like, oh, wait, I'm only like 30, 20 seconds behind. I can still win this. So I keep going, and then I get the 3YG. The first coconut goes into the water, and then the second one, I spam spray into the water, so I have to exit area and restart it. <laughs> Which, <laughs> at that point, I was already, like, giving up. And then I started just going all out, not even caring. And I started making a comeback. I think I got down to like plus 50 seconds or something mid Serena after like a plus two minute. And then King Boo gave me five extras. And I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so yeah. Now, both of you guys talking about game three here, I do have a very important question. After three hours about of gameplay, somewhere around there, so much pressure, so much execution. How did you guys hold it together so well throughout that last match with so much on the line? I'll let you go first, SB. Dude, I just felt like I needed to give it my all and try to come back at the end there. Like I just, I was just like in the zone a little bit. Uh, for me, I had a godlike early game, and I'm like, okay, just treat this like a normal run. You're on world record pace, and like I kept going through that, and then Pena went as wrong as I could. I got the rare chance of clipping through the boat, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that just set me back fully. And then I was just shaking for the rest of the run because I would just always look at the stream, like SB slowly catching up. Because like I'm in Noki, I fell into water so many times. Mm. Yeah, and I was just like, oh my god. Yeah, I mean SB. I, I you're you're the last half of game three you started to clutch big time and started to make up um several seconds now my big question is what like you didn't go for fast corona was there any reasoning behind that i wanted to keep it close and not choke the end <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense i can respect you know, if it. jj made a mistake in bowser i didn't want to already have died so that's fair yeah. SB. Uh, I was... <laughs> Sorry, JJ. I was going to say, just talking about King Boo, my King Boo RNG throughout <laughs> the entire thing. Yeah, we, you got four extra. Well, actually, you, so JJ, SB, you got three extra there in game three. Yeah, mm -hmm. that wasn't very good. I had two extras in game one, five extras in game two, and four extras in game three. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh yeah. on top of that earlier today i had six extras <laughs> well katsina do you have anything else you'd like to ask these guys yeah i'd like to ask sb electric you put up a very good fight during that last match did really well throughout the tournament as a whole what can we expect to see from you in sunshine in the future uh well bronze match versus sam is coming up oh that should be exciting yeah yeah lockout bingo tournament currently oh, that too. underway yeah, that yeah, is my it. first match is Friday, I think, 2 p.m. Eastern or 3 p.m. I think it's 2, though. Definitely looking forward to seeing you face Samo in that bronze match. Both of you guys very consistent yeah. during this tournament. Thank you, both of you guys, for such an exciting performance. Thank you for all of the viewers for tuning in. We had a lot of viewers today. Really nice to see people show up and support the Super, the Super Mario Sunshine and the GSA communities. I'm Kat Cena. <laughs> yeah, and I'm uh, Scott and Ty guy. Uh, just we got on Thursday Super Mario Odyssey at four o'clock. Tyler Tech versus Stravos. Uh, we don't have anything on the schedule for tomorrow just yet, but uh, just in case something pops up there, make sure to check that out. Exclamation point bracket, exclamation point schedule, and uh, that'll be it for us today. 
Uh, Katsina, thank you so much for joining me for this game three. And thank you so much to everyone for joining me for this matchup between JJ and S uh, and uh, SB Electric. Have a good evening. Peace. Peace. Peace.